All right, uh, my name is Dan Ilian. I will be talking today about the stability and structure of fields in a flow with a hydrodynamic discontinuity. Um, the motivation for this project is that interfacial mixing and transport, they control a broad range of processes in fluids, plasmas, and materials. Um, for example, they control supernova infusion, planetary convection, reactive flows, formation of phases in supercritical fluids, also material transformations. And material transport across the interface uh, is often characterized by sharp and rapid changes of the flow fields and relatively small effects of dissipation and diffusion. Uh, all this may lead to a for formation of discontinuities um, that separate the phases of the fluid at macroscopic scales. The, in, in this project, we looked at the far field uh, approximation. Uh, we considered the far field approximation uh, of the evolution of a hydrodynamic discontinuity that separates incompressible ideal fluids of different densities and has a mass flow across it. We solved the boundary problem, the boundary value problem. Uh, we find the fundamental solutions of the linearized dynamics and we directly link the interface stability to structure of the flow fields. We identify a degenerate and singular character of the classic uh, solution by Landau and show that eliminating this degeneracy leads to a neutrally stable solution whose vortical field can seed the instability. We, in addition, we find that the interface stability is linked to the magnitude of energy fluctuations at the interface. The, specifically, the interface is unstable if the energy fluctuations are large compared to the kinetic energy flux. And it is stable if the energy fluctuations uh, flux at the interface is small. And Landau's solution is consistent with the case where the flux is large. So the schematics of the flow look like this. We have a light fluid on top with density rho L and uh, velocity V L, and a heavy fluid on the bottom with corresponding density and velocity. Then in the middle, uh, we have a perturbation of characteristic length lambda, and we consider the perturbation velocity, the, the velocities uh, at, at the interface to be a sum of the bulk velocity and the perturbation velocities. So the definitions are fairly standard. The density is rho, the velocity is v, the pressure is p, the specific internal energy um, is given by E in its physics definition. Um, in addition, uh, we define energy and um, specific enthalpy, and we introduce a continuously differentiable local function, theta, that is less than zero in the light fluid and greater than zero in the heavy fluid. This allows us to define unit normal and tangential vectors to the interface, as shown there, and to describe the mass flux across the interface. Now, in the, the fluids we're dealing with are incompressible and ideal, so the specific internal energy does not change. So its derivatives with time and space are also zero. The flow that we are considering is two-dimensional, as shown on this picture. It's, uh, the, the flow is along z and the perturbation is along x. Um, and it's periodic with wavelength lambda. The governing equations uh, are the conservation of mass, momentum, and energy. Thanks to the function uh, theta, we can describe the flow field in the entire domain by using the heavy side function. 
as a sum of the flow, the fields in the heavy and in the light fluid. The governing equations are the, the conservation of mass, momentum, and energy. And the boundary conditions for those equations at the interface are the balance of flux of mass, tangential and normal components of momentum and energy uh, at the interface, also known as the uh, rankine huguenot boundary conditions. The outside boundary conditions, as shown on the, on the slide with the schematic, are just the bulk velocities in the heavy and light fluid. The characteristic length scale is uh, given by 1 over k, where k is the wave vector of the, of the perturbation. And the time scale is also given on the screen. Um, so in the leading order, the flow is uniform. We can state, we, we can define the uh, function theta to be just minus z, and uh, we will get these boundary conditions. Um, now, if we look at a small perturbation, we will add a perturbation term to, to the velocity, the pressure, the enthalpy, and the, and the flux. And these perturbation terms, of course, will be small. Um, we can then define a, our, our actual perturbation as part of theta. And then we obtain the following. Uh, we obtain the following boundary conditions. So, the structure of the solution that we're looking for, as per experimental observations and as per Lindau's theoretical framework, is such that there is a potential velocity field in the heavy fluid, and there is a potential end vertical velocity field in the light fluid. Um, the fluid potentials have uh, this form. They are uh, oscillating along x, as expected, because of the perturbation. And they are decaying exponentially along z. Um, the interface perturbation also has an exponential form. It oscillates along x. And the pressure perturbations can be derived um, as follows. The, of course, the vertical field does not contribute to the pressure perturbations. And the k uh, tilde gives us a characteristic length scale for the vortex. Uh, it, it's useful to define dimensionalist values, such as uh, the dimensionalist characteristic frequency and the density ratio. Our solution has the form R given on the screen. It's it's a vector, and. Uh, as, as shown on the previous slide, all of these values have an exponential term uh, with time. So when we plug them into the uh, boundary conditions, we are able to obtain this form. And because, because, uh, the, because of how the time comes into play in, these, uh, in this solution, we are able to uh, simplify this expression down to a matrix uh, just because we're differentiating the, the with respect to time here. Um, in, in a non-degenerate case, the matrix P has an inverse. And this will come into play in just a few slides. Um, and so then we can express the uh, PR dot equals SR 
as, uh, as that. And so we then can find the fundamental solutions by finding the eigenvalues of that system. The, the, the final solution will be a linear combination of the fundamental solutions and uh, their, their general form is given here. So now, going to the actual system. <coughs> if we balance the fluxes of mass, tangential, normal, the components of momentum and energy across the interface, we will find these boundary conditions. The matrix that I described on the previous slide has this form. And its eigenvalues are given here. We have two eigenvalues that correspond to a stable solution. One eigenvalue and, and uh, the, the third eigenvalue corresponds to an unstable solution. The fourth eigenvalue is formally stable. So now uh, we, we will look at the velocity fields of this solution. Uh, in, in this case, we're looking at, at the first, at the first uh, solution, which is stable. There is a phase difference between the velocity fields of the light and heavy fluids. You see the, the velocity fields are slightly out of phase with each other. And the pressure fields are in antiphase. Um, the region of high pressure correspond in, in the light fluid corresponds to a region of low pressure in the heavy fluid and vice versa. If we look at, its, at the complex conjugate of this solution, we see a very similar picture. It is um, the, the velocity fields are slightly out of phase. The pressure fields are in, in antiphase. And now the third solution, uh, which is omega equals r, it's formally unstable, but it is not a trivial solution because it has non-zero, it has a non-zero eigenvector. And the vortical and potential components of the light fluid are non-zero as well. It just so happens that together, they cancel each other out. And this leads to zero perturbation fields in both the light and heavy fluid. The stable solution described here is, has a vortical component that increases as we go away from the interface. And in order to satisfy the boundary conditions, we must set this inter the, the constant of integration for this solution to zero. Now, uh, going to the classic system, uh, classic Landau system, instead of balancing the energy flux across the interface, the, the fourth boundary condition is that of the continuity of the normal component of perturbed velocity. This is equivalent to the to a zero perturbed mass flux across the interface. The matrix is given here, and this matrix only has three eigenvalues. This corresponds to the Landau-Durie instability described in this paper. Um, and uh, this solution is stable, and this solution is formally unstable, but as we will see, it is zero, just like in the case with the conservative, solution, uh, conservative system. So about the three, uh, the three eigenvalues, the system has four independent degrees of freedom, and it has four equations. Um, however, there are only three fundamental solutions so the case must be the generate. And indeed, if we look at the, if we look separately at the two matrices, uh, S and P, we see where, where L is given by S minus omega P, uh, we see that the matrix P does not have an inverse because it has a row of 
its fourth row is all zeros. This is due to the boundary condition at the, to the fourth boundary condition. The, that says that the normal component of perturbed velocity across the interface is continuous. This same condition implies that the perturbed mass flux at the interface is constant and zero. In order to lift this degeneracy, we may modify this condition to a more general form and just set it equal to a constant. This will correspond to uh, the partial derivative of mass flux with time to be equal to zero at the interface. And so we call this the dynamic Landau system because the boundary condition is dynamic. Um, we, so instead of, so, so we have a, a time derivative in the fourth condition here now, and now the matrix is given by this. And as you can see, we have omegas on the fourth row, which implies that the matrix P does not have all zeros, and which implies that this solution is, th that the matrix is invertible and the solution will not be degenerate. And indeed, it has four eigenvalues. The first three are the same as before. This corresponds, this is on the unstable solution. It corresponds to the Landau degree instability. <coughs> this is a stable solution, um, as we'll see on, in two slides, it will have to be equal to zero because of the same uh, vortex at infinity. And this solution is formally unstable, but it has a zero field. And uh, the last solution, it's closely related to the first solution uh, in, in, in how the velocity fields are structured. So let's look at that a bit more closely. The <coughs> large scale, vo uh, for the first solution, there is a large scale vortex in the bulk of the fluid. It may be a bit difficult to see here, but uh, there is a, a, a larger picture in a few slides um, when, I, when I will talk about the fourth solution. So, but, but still, uh, one, one can see that there is a vortex here as opposed to uh, no large scale vortex in the, in the bulk, in the heavy fluid. There is a potential motion, there is only potential motion in the heavy fluid. The pressure fields are in phase at the interface, unlike for the conservative system. Uh, so the region of high pressure corresponds to the region of high pressure um, in the heavy fluid, corresponds to the light fluid as well. The second solution, which is formally stable, it has a vertical field that increases away from the interface. And in order to satisfy the boundary conditions, the integration constant for the solution must be set to zero. The third solution, which is identical to the uh, third solution in the conservative system, also gives a zero for the same reason. Its eigenvector is not zero, but the at omega equals r, the vortical and potential fields cancel each other out in the light fluid. And now uh, the fourth solution, it is neutrally stable and it has a large scale vortex. Now if we look at both the first solution and the fourth solution, the first is on the left, the fourth is on the right, we see that while both of them have a large scale vortex, the first solution has a finite length vortex, and the neutrally stable solution has an infinite vortex. Uh, aside of that difference, uh, 
these solutions are fairly qualitatively similar. They both possess a, a, a vortical field that is in phase in the heavy and light fluids at the interface. They, they have a thin layer uh, between the bulk and the interface motion and uh, the, poten the, the motion in the potential, uh, the motion in the heavy fluid is potential. So the scale of the vortex in the solution that, that, that is the landau derrier instability, uh, that vortex has a, that, the, the, the scale of that vortex is related to the energy, uh, sorry, it's related to the, to the density ratio of the two fluids, but in, as I mentioned, in, in the light, in the, in the fourth, uh, in the neutrally stable solution, that vortex is infinite. This is interesting because the vortex in the infinite vortex may serve as a seed for the landau derrier instability. Now uh, I will briefly talk about the role of energy fluctuations in the conservative system. So recently it was found that uh, the classic Landau solution is not compatible with energy conservation at the interface. Um, and so the question we would like to, we, we, we asked is what is the effect of energy fluctuations on interface stability? So the interface, uh, at the interface fluids undergo a phase transition, they may transform into one another and this process may be accompanied by energy fluctuations. So if we introduce an additional energy source at the interface, we can model this effect. So this, these, uh, the, these boundary conditions are identical to the ones for the conservative system, except for this term here, um, the, which, which models the energy flux at the perturbed interface. The matrix is given here. Um, the eigenvalues can be found from this equation and uh, they are fairly complex, so I will not show them here. Um, however, I will show <coughs> this uh, graph which, show, which demonstrates the behavior of eigenvalues at uh, uh, the behavior of, of each of the four eigenvalues um, as f, uh, as the value of fluctuations goes from uh, 100 to 100. And also, I will, uh, I, I will remind that this chart uh, is the same as, th 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 this chart is obtained for a uh, low value of fluctuations, but it is identical to the one we obtained in the conservative solution. And the, the one on the right is obtained for a large value of fluctuations uh, F, but it is identical to the uh, gra to, to the graph that uh, of the, the eigenvalue graph for the Landau solution. So to summarize, we have um, considered in a far field approximation the evolution of the hydrodynamic discontinuity. We've solved the boundary value problem and we've provided uh, fundamental solutions for the linearized dynamics and showed a link between interface stability and the structure of flow fields. The degenerate, uh, we identified the degenerate and singular character of the classic Landau solution and showed that if we eliminate this degeneracy, we can uh, obtain a neutrally stable solution whose infinite vortex may seed 
the Landau Duryea instability. And we showed a link between the flux of energy fluctuations at the interface and interface stability. Thank you.